So guys, Folder Doctor back again, and I'm here with Riker. Today we're going to be working on this little Brute Force 2006 model. It's got some carburetor issues. We're going to pull the carbs off, clean them up real good, and um, see if we can get it running. It won't crank right now, actually. So uh, we already been started, or we already have started on uh, a little bit of the removal of these two black covers here. Uh, got a bunch of Phillips head screws. And Riker wants to tell you something. Um, there's also going to be another bolt inside that cover. Yeah, this this bike is an older bike, but it has that uh, storage compartment cover on it. And there's actually a couple bolts in there that you have to have to uh, take off. Uh, we've got all those off. We also removed these three bolts down through here to get this side cover off, as well as the three bolts back here. Sorry about that. My finger got in the way. Three bolts, two here, one at the top. Same thing on the other side. This bolt here holds this cover on uh, in here. There's also a bolt hidden here, and this bike does have snorkels on it. Uh, there's also a bolt up here at the top that you have to remove on yours if it doesn't have the snorkels. There will be a, bolt, a screw, I'm sorry, hidden here, and a screw here that you have to take off and get these side covers. So we're going to pull the side covers off of it, uh, Get the, and then we'll be down to the air box. And, um, I'll cut the camera back on in a sec. All right, guys, got the uh, side covers off here. We're going to unbolt this air box next. You've got two 10 millimeter bolts, one here and one um, down in there. And this case has a snorkel on it. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. Your normal, yeah. A normal bike would just have a cover on this front end. And actually, I don't even think you have to remove it. You just have to take out the, uh, the tube for the belt be on the other side but in this case I'm gonna loosen this clamp up and then there's two more clamps that I need to remove I usually find it easiest to remove the bottom boot clamp um, right where it bolts to the top of the carburetor uh, right there and then one over here when you do that uh, you can usually lift the air box up and Riker wants to tell you something um, there, um, you're, you're gonna have to push the um, thing this thing out of there to get um, to get something off of the four wheeler, you and it, it might go into there. It might go into here, and then after you pull the side cover off, you might get it. You might get it back out of there, and it it's gonna have a black wire on it with a cable tie. Most of them does, it. but but you, you might you might have to look for this, and you might you might if you don't know how much gas is in there. Put the key into the um, thing and crank it up. Okay, Riker lost that uh, ignition switch, so he wanted to explain to everyone where that was. Okay, so now we're going to unbolt this, uh, the air box and pull that up. Okay. All right, guys, I got the air box out of the way on this thing. Um, this is a little, got some aftermarket stuff on it, some vent hoses and stuff like that that you aren't going to see on your bike. This is um, different stuff. But um, what we're going to do next, take these two vent lines off the carbs. It's, one on the rear and one on the front. Uh, also, I've already removed it just to check to see if the fuel pump is still pumping. Fuel line goes in right here, and it's got a little pinch clamp on it, so just slide that off. And need to remove the um, top clamp on those uh, on those boots where it, the carbs attached to the to the uh, cylinder heads. And when you get those loose the carburetors you can rock them side to side and the carburetors will come up and there'll be two electrical wires on this front carb and one electrical wire on the back carb unplug those and that'll allow you to lift the whole carburetor up this case here i'm gonna probably try to do a real good clean on it so i'm gonna um, completely unbolt the carbs from the bike and uh get them over on the bench so once i get it loose the wires unhooked pulled up here I'll cut the camera back on just to show you uh, everything else you need to do to get the carbs completely off the bike alright guys I got the carburetors up now um, so I'm gonna uh, pull the carburetor I mean the throttle cable off of it now what you do is take this these two screws out one here and one here and loosen this clamp up just a little bit and you'll have to get the uh, cable off of the little cam in there I'll cut the camera back on once it gets this cover off and show you what's on the inside Alright guys, this is what the cover off. What you want to do is loosen this um, little pinch nut right up, up a little bit. And it will let your uh, throttle cable slide out. Then uh, rotate your your throttle around a little bit there until you get that barrel 
on the end of your cable to come out. And I can't quite do it with one hand, so let me uh, cut the camera off and I'll, I'll cut it back on in a sec. Okay, so I got the uh, the cable loose there. Next thing you need to do is take off the it's done pulled out, but the um, idle adjuster and the drain hose here just pulls out the bottom, and then the carburetor will come up, come up and come out. And uh, next thing to do, let me put me a drain pan under here. It's going to drain some gas out of the out of the vent lines, vent line holes. Uh, next thing to do is take these chokes off. They have a uh, Phillips head screw right there, and this little bracket comes off. Both of them are identical. So uh, take that screw out, slide that bracket out, and then slide the chokes out, and then the carburetor will come off in your hand. So let me uh, let me do that real quick, and I'll cut the camera back on once I get it over on the bench. All right, guys, got the carburetor over on the bench. Um, we'll start out with taking the bowls off the bottom. These are uh, four Phillips head screws per bowl. We'll pull those off, and uh, then we'll see what's on the inside. I'll cut the camera back on in a sec. Yeah. All right, guys. Uh, pull these off. These things are actually pretty clean. I'm thinking this might have a jet issue because it's got an exhaust on it, and I don't know what jets are in here, so I'm going to pull them out and check. Everything else looks pretty clean in here. I'm going to still clean everything up naturally, and I'm also going to uh, pull these uh, mixture screws out and clean them as well. So let me get some of these parts out. You do want to keep these separated because um, the front jet has different, I mean the front carburetor has different jets than the rear carburetor. So um, make sure you set them, set them to the side or label it or something so you'll know which one came out of what. So let me get all those pulled out and uh, then I may flip it over and do the top side too. I guess I didn't cover it real close. What you want to do, this is the uh, pilot jet, idle jet. Um, it's got the smallest hole of any of these jets. And... I can't quite see through it, so it looks like there might be something in there. You just have to take a piece of wire and strip the insulation off and stick one strand of wire through there to clean it out. Uh, this is the main jet. Normally they have a big hole in them, so they very seldom uh, clog up unless you've got something real big. And then there's two emulsion tubes on this thing. You want to bolt, uh, unscrew both of those just to make sure they're good and clean because I've seen them get gummed up as well. And also loosen this screw up here to take your float and your um, and your needle out to check your seat, make sure it's clean. So let me let me do all that, and I'll cut the camera back on. All right, guys, I got uh, most of the stuff out of the this. Uh, this is actually the rear carburetor. Uh, next thing I'm gonna do is take this mixture screw out. What you want to do on it is uh, run the mixture screw in until it's slightly seated, just to see how many turns it goes in. So run it in, then pull it back out, and uh, there'll be a a washer, a spring, oh, and a uh, and a yeah, yeah. in there. All right, guys, got everything tore down from the back side. Now I'm gonna uh, take these four bolts out of this top cover here and get the bellows out. All right, guys, I got the uh, pretty much everything for this rear one cleaned up. Took and sprayed some um, uh, carb cleaner in all these holes here. Blew them out with air. Also flipped it over. Uh, blew air and carb th cleaner through that hole. All these holes here, uh, clean the top of it up. It's it's pretty clean in there. And so now, I went and took a wire brush and cleaned up all these uh, emulsion tubes and the little adapter here, as well as the jet, um, the pilot jet. That's the main jet there. Clean this uh, mixture screw needle up. And so now I'm gonna start putting it back together. First thing I'm gonna put on is this uh, main jet holder. Goes in that middle hole there. Just uh, screw it down. It's an eight millimeter. I usually um, just tighten it down, hand tight, and then uh, just kind of cinch it down with a with a um, socket. If I can find a socket. It doesn't have to be real, real, real tight. And it is brass, so you kind of want to go easy on it. All right, next thing to go in will be the uh, jet. This one here has a little bit oversized jet. This rear jet, or rear uh, carb, calls for a, um, a one, 
It's a 158, I believe, factory. This is a 160. So this bike does have a exhaust on it, so um, it's got a little bit bigger jet. So I got that one in there. Just cinch it down with the with the uh, flat screwdriver, and I uh, got this pilot jet cleaned up. Let's see if you can see the hole through it. I don't know if you can or not. It's got a very, 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 very small hole through it. So what you want to do with it? Easiest way to clean it out is to take a piece of wire, just electrical wire, strip the insulation off, and pull one strand of wire out to stick through this hole, um, and that works. So that goes into this hole here. Tighten it down with the flat screwdriver as well. I'm just going to show you uh, the reassembly on this one, this rear carb, and then uh, the other one's exactly the same. Okay. All right, next thing to go in will be our uh, float. Uh, what you want to do on it is just take your, take your. they call this the needle, needle and seat, the seats down in here. Just take and clean the little rubber end up on that. Make sure it'll seal off. This this bike didn't have a problem uh, leaking out the bottom of the carb anyway. It just wouldn't run, so um, there's probably nothing wrong with the needle and seat in this case. I did uh, spray down in that hole as well with the um, carb cleaner to make sure it was cleaned out. So now you just kind of fish this thing in here. It's easier to do with two hands, but I'm holding the camera with one. So, all right, and then you got a, um, a Phillips head screw to tighten down on it, and then that's ready to cover or the. Uh, bowls ready to go back on that one next thing we need to put in is the mixture screw here and the way it goes in you had this little small o-ring it goes in first into this hole actually the easiest way to put this all together is to put it in as an assembly so you take your pin you take your little spring goes on next take your washer goes on next and o-ring goes on last the o-ring most of the time kind of holds tight to the shaft and it will help you slide everything together there's your finished product you got the spring the washer and the o-ring and very carefully just slide it down into this hole here and what you want to do is tighten that all the way up The, um, just tighten it down, not like you're tightening a, a bolt down to where it, uh, you know, slams down to the bottom. It, it calls for lightly seating. So you run it in, run it in until it stops. And then pay attention to where the, uh, slot is on it. I usually like to run these out about two and a half turns. The manual calls for two and a quarter, I think. So we're going to go two and a half on this one. All right. Let's, seat it all the way down so then pay attention to where your slot is and then back that thing out two and a half turns so that's one two and a half all right that one's done i uh, do have to finish tightening this bolt up and i'm gonna make sure i got these um tightened down good i'll cut the camera back on when i flip over to the other side the diaphragm all right, so I got the bowl bolted up to the bottom there. Uh, next thing to put in is this diaphragm. You want to make sure you keep up with that little small little dial that's inside there. Um, this thing will only go back on here one way, so you can kind of orient it to where your dial is going to line up this hole. And slide your diaphragm down in there. I also want to look on the inside here and make sure your that needle there it lines up with that um, little brass collar that sticks up. It slides in. Kind of, kind of rub your rub your hand around it to make sure the uh, the rubber part gets into that little groove that it fits into. Put your spring back on, and then your cover, and then the four screws to hold it on, and you're you're done with that. This is also oriented to where that tab lines up with that with that dial over top of that dial. All right, so now we've just got to tighten those four bolts up or screws up. And then do the other side, and I'll stick it back on the bike. 
All right, guys, I went ahead and stuck the chokes back in with the little bracket there and the, um, the Phillips head screw front and rear. Did clean up the end of that little choke plunger. It looked, looked pretty clean, though. So now uh, you just slip this thing over, slide it down in here. Um, still want to kind of get it kicked up to the side like this so you can get the throttle cable back on and this cover back on before you actually slide it down. Um, once you get that cover on, you want to tilt it the other direction and hook these three wires back up on the right side of it and I'll cut the camera back on after I get all that done and right before I um, I guess right before I crank it up I'm gonna try to crank it without the air box on just to see how it's gonna run all right cut the camera on in a sec I right, got the carb in there I uh, ended up having this uh, choke cable flipped upside down here on the front it actually needs to feed in from the top instead of the bottom like I'd had it initially uh, the back one does come in from the bottom but um uh, the easiest way to get the carburetor on there is to, or I found, is to get that front boot in and push it forward and down. So what's wrong with this camera? It just keeps cutting off. But uh, the easiest way to get this carburetor in here is to get the front boot in first and push it forward and down to get that back boot in. Um, I'm going to see if we can get it to fire up here. Um, it usually turns over for a little bit. Because the carburetors are dry naturally, don't have any gas in them because we just drained it all out. So it takes a minute to pump it up there. But uh, we'll see if we can get it to fire up. Choke it. Alright, one other thing you can do while you're trying to crank this thing over, if you hold your hand over one of these carbs as you're turning it over, it will suck gas up in there most of the time and, and get it primed up to start up. Let me see if I can try that. if you could hear that or not you could see both of the diaphragms were bouncing up and down that means you got a good seal on both of your top covers there so they're working um see it it kind of cutting back just a little bit but it usually does that when you have the air box uh, off like this so uh, i'm gonna stick the air box back on and the about the easiest thing to do with it is to get like i did the bottom get the front boot started first and then the then the slide the back boot on sometimes it can be very aggravating so uh use your patience there but uh i might show a, a finished video once i get the air box on and make sure it's going to run run perfectly right um the other thing you need to i didn't cover it was uh hook these vent lines back up to the carbs uh front and rear and i think that's about it look around make sure you don't have any gas leaks i don't see anything leaking out now so uh, i think we should be good i'm gonna stick the air box on there and we'll see how it runs in